Hey guys, the objective of this video is to find the permanent and imposed actions on the joist B1. Okay, so just to show you where we're at, we're looking at these joists B1. So, the first thing we need to do is find the tributary area for the joist. Now, I mentioned this in the previous, sorry, in the start of the series, that because the joists and the girders are in the same plane, the beams. Uh, this, the tributary area could behave like a one or two way slab, all right? The load path um, is such that because the girders and be the girders and joists are in the same plane, we could have the slab behaving as a one or two way slab. So just to remind you what that sort of looked like, if we take it a typical tributary area for this girder, you, sorry, for this uh, joist over here, the B1 joist, we know that this total length is 12 meters, which means that the distance between each joist is three meters, okay? Which means that the area of slab this joist will carry will be 1.5 meters in that direction and 1.5 meters in that direction. I hope that's obvious. Same thing for this joist here, it's gonna be 1.5, 1.5. Same thing for this thing here, 1.5, 1.5. So each one of those is three. And this edge girder, which we're not worried about now because this is a completely different um, beam, that's gonna carry 1.5 meters of this and 1.5 meters of that slab, okay? So that's just dividing it up. So, we talked about in the previous video this idea of a one-way slab, and it's, so this is a one-way slab and two-way slabs. So we need to establish whether this um, slab is gonna behave as a one-way, so just that and that, which is a lot simpler, or whether it's gonna divide like this, so that some of the um, slab load will go to this girder and that girder and in triang triangular uh, load paths or whether some of the slab load will go to this joist in trapezium shapes. Okay, so the way we do that is we simply just find the aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is equal to the long length of the slab over the short length of the slab. So this length is nine meters on three meters, long on short is nine on three, which gives us an answer of three. Now, because the aspect ratio is greater than or equal to two, as it's three, we can say the slab behaves like a one-way slab, which as a schematic is that, okay? So all the load in the slab is going straight to the joist. None of it is going to the girder, which makes it a little bit simpler because we just have UDLs, not triangle or trapezium uh, distributions, which are a little bit more complex to find. So, working this out now, we're first gonna do the permanent actions G. Now the permanent actions is the sum of the permanent action from the slab above, because those joists are carrying the slab, as well as the self weight of the actual joist B1. So the permanent action of the slab. Now we found in the previous video that the area load of this slab, so the, area, the whole area load is 4.685 kPa. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply that by three meters. And the reason we multiply it by that length there is because we've seen in some of the previous videos when we, want, we was talked about this, that when we had a pressure to find the, uh, the UDL in the direction we want, we multiply it by the length perpendicular. So we want the UDL going along that line there, along the joist. Therefore, we multiply it by the length perpendicular, which is three meters, okay? So we're gonna have 4.685 by three. So 4.685 by three gives us 14.0555 kilonewtons per meter, where this length is the perpendicular length to the direction we want the load in. Now the self weight of the joist is gonna be the density times by the area times by gravity divided by a thousand because that's gonna give us kilonewtons per meter, okay? We also saw this idea in the previous video. We have density times area times gravity, where the area is gonna be, so if we look at the joist, which is B1, so joist B1 is section BB, so you can see that this is 300 by 400, that area there of the joist, and we, once again, we've said this previously, that we exclude the length of the direction we want the load to go in, okay, for area. So the area is gonna be 0.3 by 0.4. So 0.3 by 0.4, we're not including the length of the actual girder, okay, the length of, sorry, the length of the actual joist, which is nine meters, we don't include that length. We only wanna find the area and the dimensions of the area 
is we exclude the dimension um, which is the which which is that we exclude the dimension which is the le which is parallel to the length of the UDL. Okay, so we want the UDL to go in this direction, so we exclude that length. So that means that the area is going to be 0.3 by 0.4. And dimension wise, that's going to give us kilonewtons per meter. Okay, so density 2500 times area 0.3 by 0.4, working in meters to keep our units consistent, by 9.8, and then we divide that by 1000 to give us 2.94 kilonewtons per meter, which means that the permanent action is just the sum of the slab above and the dead load of the actual joist. So 14.055 plus 2.94 gives us 16.995 kilonewtons per meter. Once again, it's writing in a nice big box, 16.95 kilonewtons per meter. We can then work out the imposed action Q. Now, we've, the imposed action is just equal to the imposed action on the joist B1, which is just equal to the imposed action from the slab, okay? So when we impose an action over a slab, the slab takes it, which then transfers it into the beam. Now, that we don't double it up, there's no there's no um, imposed action on slab and beam. There's just imposed action across the floor area, which is then transferred into the beam. Okay, so we don't need to worry about anything else. The imposed action is just from the slab above. So we saw in the previous video, we had an imposed action of 3 kPa. So we saw that before. Previous video, imposed action on slab is 3 kPa. And then we just multiply that by the perpendicular length. So the perpendicular length we want the UDL to run in this direction, so we multiply it by the perpendicular length, which is 3 meters. So kPa by meters would give us kilonewtons per meter. Okay, kPa is a kilonewton per meter squared times by meter would give us kilonewton per meter. So 3 by 3 is 9 kilonewtons per meter. The imposed action on the joist B1 is 9 kilonewtons per meter. Okay, pretty simple. I just want you to realize that both the impermanent action and the imposed action are both a UDL in kilonewtons per meter. So we have effectively found the UDL going along this joist from the slab and its self weight for the permanent and from the slab imposed action above as 9 kilonewtons per meter. Anyway, guys, hope that helps, and we'll see you in the next video.